we go. Pretty entry alert. I'm checking my other camera to see if it's on. Ah, I hope you had an awesome Thursday. I had an awesome Thursday. This camera over here. There we are. Now yeah, it shows that I'm recording. All right. Well, I had an awesome Thursday. I hope you did. I have more people to pray for. Um, wow, we need to pray for our government. It is a mess right now. My hair is a mess, too. Had it in a ponytail all day. Got the ponytail hairdo going on. Anyway, I'm not going to be on here for long. I want to read uh, Psalm 11. It's time to do Psalm 11. I guess I'm just going to have that piece of hair sticking out. That's lovely. just want to take some scissors and whack it off. And it does stuff like that. All right, I'll just put it back there in the back. Maybe it will hide it. Anyway, Psalm 11. Diving into Psalms. We are continuing to dive into Psalms this week. And... Um, Anyway, it's hot outside. I hope that none of you have had to have been outside all day. Like my poor husband that works outside, I don't know how he does it. Sometimes he comes in and he's just totally exhausted. But anyway, I'm thankful that he's willing to do it. Being in the house would drive me crazy. All right, what do I have? I need my fan here. I don't know what I put on for Seth to watch. I don't remember. He may be coming in here. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray. God, we just come to you and we just pray, God. We bring, we are so thankful. We're thankful, God, that you care about us and you do want us to bring you the things that concern us. God, we trust you because you are on your throne and you are in control. There is nothing that gets by you. You see everything from your throne. You hear everything from your throne, God. So much is going on right now. As you know, I know you're not wringing your hands in heaven. I know you have everything under control. We just need to trust you. But it does get overwhelming at times. We thank you, God, for being our creator, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. God, you are the righteous judge. And vengeance is yours. It's not ours. We are <clears throat> to even treat our enemies with respect and pray for them and be willing to do things for them. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, but yet you are caring and loving and compassionate and kind and patient and forgiving, and you want none to perish, God. It is not your plan for anyone to perish and spend eternity in hell. It is your plan for all to be in heaven with you. That is what you created us for. God, thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to see where they are and to return to you, to uh, repent of their sins and to Enjoy a close relationship with you. God, we pray for all the disasters. It looks like people have perished from um, this storm, this storm Ida, God. We just pray that you would be with their friends and their families and give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for the people in Afghanistan, God, that you would make a way for them to get out if that is your plan for them that miraculously obstacles would be removed so that they can uh, receive freedom from the tyrants that have their country. God, we just pray 
I pray for guidance and wisdom for our government, God, because they are not making good decisions. They are not making good sound decisions. And it's just kind of like, it seems like it's on purpose. God, you, only you know all the, all the plans and purposes, God. And we know that Jesus has overcome evil and that through Jesus we are overcomers. But God, it's just um, it's just kind of hard now seeing everything that's going on and not really through the love and compassion of Jesus understanding why everything's going on. But God, we trust you. And that's all that matters is that we trust you. And God, we just pray for all the other disasters that are going on, God, that you would meet the needs of these people. That you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus. That you would send people with the loving compassion of Jesus to meet their needs. And God, we just again pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. I want to lift up my friend that's sick to you, God. I just pray for healing for her. And I pray for continued healing for my other friends that have been sick, that are on there, that are being healed. And uh, we just give you all the honor and glory and praise, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. I have popcorn popping on my YouTube video that I'm going to upload later. Oh, my camera, it still can't get everything to look normal. I may work on it tonight some. All right, so Psalm 11. Let's look at Psalm 11 and see what it says. Another verse that I shared on Facebook was um, something about God being on his throne and seeing everything that was going on. And um, I don't doubt that that is exactly what's going on right now. So the title of this is Faith in the Lord's Righteousness to the Chief Musician, and this is a Psalm of David. And it's kind of short. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, Flee as a bird to your mountain, for look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? Don't we feel helpless at times? Because it seems like evil's going to win, but in reality it's not. So what do we do? Let's listen to the next part. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. See, God doesn't miss anything. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. So there will be a day of reckoning. And I've, I've heard this word lately from other pastors. There will be a day of reckoning for the evil. It may look like the evil is going to win, but there is going to be a day of reckoning for them that um, God's not going to be happy that day on the day of reckoning because that's not what he created them for. He created them to honor and glorify him and to follow his plan and purpose and not theirs. And so there will be a day of reckoning. And that will be when God pours out all of his wrath on mankind. And 
then the final day of reckoning will be the day that Jesus comes back with his army to defeat the evil once and for all. So the day of reckoning is coming. And I don't have any study part on 11. That's weird because it just like left out 10 and 11. Like they don't make any, like they're not important enough to put some study parts down here. I don't know. So we're going to move on to Romans 12 because I was reading Romans 12 yesterday. I wanted to read it to the youth girls, but they read something else, and that's okay because I am so proud of our youth girls because they are leading their small Bible study time on their own. They're trading off, and they're doing their own leading, and I'm just facilitating their leading, and if they have any questions, I answer their questions. That's what we want. We want to develop leaders. You know, if you go into your youth group and you do absolutely everything for them, you're never going to develop leaders. So we are trying to develop leaders, and I am praising God because they are really stepping up to the plate. And I'm very proud of every one of them. Even the ones that don't feel comfortable and maybe they haven't stepped up to the plate, I'm still proud of them too. And their day will come when they'll feel comfortable doing that. Okay, so Romans 12. I was reading Romans 12 yesterday and I thought, this is so great because this is talking about what we need to do now. Beseech ye, therefore, it's called living sacrifices to God is what my heading is in Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So again, we are not to be conformed to the ways of the world. We are to have our minds renewed and we are to be transformed to the ways of God because that is his perfect will for us, is for us not to be conformed to the world. Serve God with spiritual gifts. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So we don't all have the same gifts in the body of Jesus, in the body of Christ. We are all one body in Christ, but we don't all have the same gifts. Uh... And that's quite apparent. We don't all have the same job in our uh, churches with our church family. We don't all have the same job. We all have different jobs according to what God's perfect will for us is, what he's called us to do. So it says, behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. 
not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributed distributing to the needs of the saints, give to, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Like just because evil is rampant around us, we don't go and repay evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, leave, live peace, peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So as Christians, we are not supposed to be of the world. So we are not to exact revenge or avenge against other people that do us wrong. That is God's job. But you have to keep in mind, too, that sometimes your enemy has reasons for being who they are. And I find the best thing, if I can't get along with someone, I will start praying for them. And God will show me things about them that I didn't even know. And he will change my heart and he will change their heart. So that is the best way to take care of an enemy. Pray for them. Be kind to them. Go out of your way to do nice things for them. And I guarantee you, it will change that relationship. Because you're doing it God's way. You're not doing it your way. You're not trying to repay evil for evil, which God tells us not to do. All right. Well, it's time for a salvation message. Um, let's just do the bracelet. I think... You can't see my messy desk, thank goodness, because it is really messy. I got popcorn down here at this camera, which might be able to see. There's something that's poking up that I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe something over here. I don't know. Oh, maybe over. It doesn't matter. I think it's that notebook back there. Okay. Well, let's do this. I don't know where my friend Josie is, and I probably need to call her and see how she's doing. I wonder if she started back to work this week. She may just really be tired. I totally get it. Okay. So, well, now I folded all this up. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I don't know how I normally do this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. So we have the gold color here. We have the gold. I'm trying to get it on both cameras. Okay, there's the gold. The gold color represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. 
And so then we have the next one on this bracelet, which is the black with the white question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that I all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? That's a good question. Well, here is the answer. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So then we have the white with the red question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus? Jesus' gift of salvation by believing in him. And so if, if no, then let's pray. It says if yes, which is confusing. I think it's if no. So let's pray, and I'll leave a space that you can pray after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Sorry, my eye itches. Okay, the next color is green. Now something's poking me in the side. The next color is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Okay, well, we have the heart. We have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. Read the Bible each day, the little Bible symbol. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And then we have the little praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. And then we have the baptism. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. Well, we talked about that last night at youth. Hang out. Sorry, but my itch. 
on the side. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. It really is. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So if you said that prayer and invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. I just realized I have this in there, and there's like nothing coming through it because I was listening to my phone on it earlier. Okay, well, it is, we did the salvation. So now it's time for the blessing, and it's not going to be on here for very long tonight because the uh, song was really short tonight. So let's go to Numbers 6, 24 through uh, 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Wow. Peace is a great thing. It's great. We all need peace. Okay. Well, I'm going to pray again. I'm going to do a really short prayer this time. I covered all my sick friends earlier. So I'm going to do a prayer mostly for the people that have had tragedy the past two weeks and just the things that are going on because of that. I believe that's what I feel like, feel led to. And I put popcorn on my other video. I can't do that on Facebook. They don't have any good filters on Facebook that you can use. Some of them are really kind of weird. So I put popcorn over here because I feel like some of the news that we're watching is like a show. So I feel like I had my popcorn tonight. I didn't eat it. I don't have any popcorn here. But it is. It's like we're watching a show. It's like I've seen some movies like what's going on right now. And it's like a lot of actors. Does everybody have their own part to play? It's just uh, really weird. That's why I put the popcorn on there. That's my explanation for YouTube. So they will not want to know why I put popcorn on there. All right, well, let's pray. God, we thank you because you are sovereign over all. You are God of all. You are the one true God. You are the only God. You're the only God that I will bow to. You're the only God that I will bring my praise, my glory, and my honor to. God, we pray for these situations that we're in. God, we just pray. We pray for your sovereignty, God. We are seeing things fall into place, God, and we thank you for that. And we are seeing some things that are hard to believe that we're seeing, that they're happening before our eyes. And we have read it in your word, God, so we know that it's truth. There are many lies floating out amongst the truth, God. So give us the Holy Spirit power to discern truth from lies, God. Give us the boldness to go out and share the gospel of Jesus and to share your truth out of your word, God. We pray, God, for all the people that are in need, and there are so many 
There are uprising in countries over vaccine mandates. There are so many things going on right now that people are not happy. They are not happy about. There are people that are losing freedoms. I watched yesterday a deal in Australia that they are in a total lockdown. You can't even go places unless you have a reason to go, like the store or the doctor. You can't just go and hang out with your friends, God. Like we have the freedom to do right now. And thank you for that, God. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for supplying all that we need, God. We may not always be to where we have a supply of what we need. Because I feel in my spirit that tougher times are coming. But I feel in my spirit that even in those tougher times, that we can trust you, God. That you will supply our needs. That you will protect us. God, again, we lift up the Afghanistan people to you. God, they were, they were enjoying freedom. And in one week, that freedom is gone. And these people are being hunted down like animals to be killed because they do not believe the way that the Taliban believe. God, please protect them. Please surround them with your angels, God. If our military won't do right, then maybe, maybe our allies would go in there, God, and free those people. If our military, not our military, I'm sorry. If our leaders are just going to sit back and watch people get killed, then maybe somebody else's military will go in there and free the people. I've never been ashamed of, well, I have before, but I'm very ashamed of our leaders and what they have done and then called it a victory when so many people are dying every day in Afghanistan because they did not do the right things. They did not leave the way they should. They left like cowards in the middle of the night. Left our base. Our base that we could have used to fly people out. Just gave it over. And let the Taliban release 5,000 prisoners. That was not a good plan. And that is not a victory. That is a sad account. And that will go down into history. And it will be their legacy. But that is such a huge failure. God, you even know things that I don't know about that. And I probably know more than what most people even listening to this know. God, I just we just pray for your favor. We pray that you would forgive the United States for their blasphemy towards you and your son, their blatant sin, their blatant um, worship of idols, God. Just pray that you, we would be united again, God. We would be united under you and under the banner of love of Jesus. We pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. We pray for salvation to just come through the United States and all over the world, God. We pray for this harvest to be brought in. We pray for the workers not to give up, just to keep working. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, my... Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
I am going to get off of here. Go feed my child. I already ate dinner. I'm going to go feed my child. It's 18. I can't believe he's 18, but he really is. But he's still a child. It's always going to be my child. And, uh, well, I'm going to go prepare his food. He can feed himself. But, um, just keep all these things in prayer, if you will. God bless you and your families abundantly. Much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.